Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be talking about a developing storm in the Southern Plains. It'll be moving along the Gulf Coast over the next several days, bring the potential for heavy rain that could lead to some flooding and as well as a sneaky tornado risk. Also, we'll be watching for a storm into next weekend that could bring a more substantial threat for not just severe weather, but also a much larger storm. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's begin with what's happening across the United States today, and we'll first begin with the Southern Plains and the Gulf Coast, where it is very active as of today. We have actually a lot of cloud cover right now being detected on the infrared imagery. There's been some showers out there, a couple rumbles of thunder perhaps, but overall, it's mostly just rain right now, but over the next few days, we're going to have a low pressure system actually located a little bit further off here to the west, and this is going to move off to the east toward Louisiana, and it's going to start to develop along the Gulf Coast, bring the potential for very heavy rainfall over multiple days and it's also going to be a very slow moving disturbance and we're going to break down everything that you need to know about that disturbance here in just a few minutes now back over to the central and northern plains it remains very very dry and this is typical for an el nino sort of fall into winter but obviously we're not really looking for that in a lot of areas especially with the drought that we have ongoing especially across areas like the midwest for example there's a little disturbance actually just north of the great lakes a low pressure system located right right here just north of the Great Lakes and north of Michigan and that's been actually bringing some very light snowfall and as well as very light drizzle to parts of the upper Midwest over the past 24 hours but that is beginning to move out now and then back over in the Pacific Northwest we continue to see a lot of rainfall up there and that's been ongoing for about a week or two now and that's because of all the atmospheric rivers that have been ongoing in the Pacific Ocean that should wind down a bit more as we had later into this week so just for reference it will not be here forever uh, it should end really I think before things Thanksgiving. So again, rainfall should kind of dwindle there a little bit more as we head later into this month. All right, let's talk more about the weather pattern that's impacting the United States. And to look at that, we're actually going to look at the mid-level winds, the 500 millibar winds. We usually look at the 300 millibar, which is actually the jet stream. We're going to go a little bit closer here to the surface because this will give us more of an idea of the weather patterns that are occurring across the United States. So right now we have our jet stream that's actually lifted back up here to the north, even though we're looking at the 500 millibar chart. The jet stream is pretty far off to the north. And as it lifts off to the north, we're actually going to get warmer weather and drier weather probably as we go into the mid to late week that should change as we get closer though to this upcoming weekend so keep that in mind uh, here's a little low pressure system though again north of the Great Lakes that's been bringing some light precipitation to parts of the upper Midwest over the past 24 hours and our next disturbance that we need to watch for closely is right here this is actually a closed low and a closed low is essentially something that's going to be moving much slower as it moves off to the east but it is not a cutoff low because it is still connected to the jet stream as we go into Monday and into Tuesday, though, notice this low pressure system. It does move over parts of Texas. One key feature about this, it's not a very intense low pressure system. It's in the subtropical jet. But one thing you want to keep in mind here is that this is actually a bit negatively tilted. So there will be a little bit of a low level jet here associated with this system as it moves toward the southeast, like Florida, for example, where there could be a tornado risk as we head closer to Wednesday and perhaps even into Thursday. This is by Tuesday into Wednesday. Closed low develops again right over Louisiana. Louisiana. And this is going to be pretty slow moving. So that's going to allow for a lot of rainfall along the Gulf Coast, which by the way, Louisiana desperately needs rainfall right now with the drought that's ongoing there. By the time we get to Thursday to Friday, that low pressure system continues to bring rain to Florida. It will start to move out as we head late into Friday into Saturday. And then our next storm is going to start to develop over on the West Coast of the United States by around Friday night to Saturday. And this system here could also be very impactful. But the thing is, we are still about six to seven days out from this happening. So think Things have been changing a little bit over the last 48 hours, but this will definitely be something to watch for because we could get a negatively tilted drop that could end up bringing the potential for some more significant severe weather. But I want you to keep in mind, we are still very far out. Things are definitely bound to change with this. The other thing we have to keep in mind is that the temperatures need to be supportive of severe weather. And this will obviously be a system to watch for very closely, though. And depending on where this low pressure system goes, that could easily kind of play into the role of where we even see severe weather and where will we see the potential for wintry precipitation, if any. Any, and will we see some really heavy rainfall? And I'll show you more details on this in just a second. Let's talk a bit more, though, about the southeast in terms of that tornado risk over the next few days. It's really not going to be very representative over the next 48 hours. We're not really looking at a tornado risk, I would say, through Tuesday. Initially, this low pressure system was forecasted to be a bit further off to the north. And with that being said, if it was even like right here, we could get a little tornado risk down near the Gulf Coast. Doesn't seem like that'll happen on Tuesday. But going into Wednesday and Thursday, we might get enough of a low-level jet here in Florida 
reported that there might be a couple of tornadoes on Thursday. The low-level jet would be supportive enough for that with this low-pressure system being located right, right here, just west of Florida. And again, this would be your low-level jet right here. So we'll have to watch this closely as we go into the next few days. And again, we don't have an official outlook from the Storm Prediction Center yet on this particular disturbance, but it will be something to watch for because there definitely is an environment here where we might see a couple of tornadoes. And depending on how strong this low-pressure system does remain as it goes into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, that'll kind of play into a factor as well with this system. Here's the future radar, by the way. So this is Tuesday afternoon around about 12 o'clock or so. Heavy rainfall expected across the Gulf Coast and as well as back into even into Florida here. By the time we get to Wednesday, showers and storms continue, mostly offshore for most of Wednesday. By Thursday, that all comes back inshore to Florida. And eventually by Friday, the system is kind of sitting over top of Florida. By the time we get to Saturday, it's out of here and we're done with it. So again, there will be multiple days of rain across the Gulf Coast and the Southeast. Rainfall totals, according to the European model, are actually very well up there. Uh, if you're in the Gulf of Mexico, the fish obviously have to be watching out for 12 to 15 inches of rain, which is just going to go into the ocean. Back over along areas in southern Louisiana, we'll be talking about four to six inches, perhaps in a couple of spots. Again, that will not be widespread, but we'll definitely be watching for at least some isolated amounts there. Florida as well, anywhere from like a half an inch all the way up, maybe up closer to four to five inches of rain. Again, that'll be a bit more of an isolated amount though overall. All right, let's look at the future radar across the entire United States and give you an idea of that big storm that'll be impacting the United States, perhaps going into the upcoming weekend. Again, there's some uncertainty with it, but it does look a bit more likely than not now that this will end up happening. So as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, again, notice that Gulf of Mexico disturbance that'll continue. By the way, this is not expected to become tropical. If it does, it's a very, very low chance right now of happening. Uh, overall high pressure system dominating in the Northeast and pretty dry across anywhere in the Great Plains by the time we get to Tuesday night into Wednesday. By Thursday, we'll be looking at a tiny little clipper system back over in the upper Midwest and Northern Plains. Maybe some flurries going into Thursday evening. Doesn't look very significant. By Friday, some rain will kind of drape down into parts of the Ohio Valley. By the time we get into Saturday, though, notice this storm that starts to explode after it goes over the Rocky Mountains, which again, this is a typical setup for this time of the year in our second severe weather season. So we might get some sort of storm to explode here. And whether what happens next is kind of a question mark. But by the time we get to Saturday night, this will be something to watch for. By the time we get to Sunday, it becomes much larger. If there were to be any severe weather out of this, it would likely be in this region here going into Sunday. So just keep that in mind. But again, things could change. The low pressure system, where it is, could also change. It might be further north, might be further south. Just kind of keep that in mind. Again, things are definitely going to change over the next few days. We'll have a much more refined forecast for you as we get closer. By the time we get into Monday and Tuesday, that moves across areas in the Dixie Alley, which is obviously a prime spot for tornadoes during this time of the year. By the time we go to late Monday into Tuesday, things become very uncertain. Uh, but obviously, the low pressure system could very easily intensify as it goes into the Midwest with this sort of setup by the time we go into early next week. But again, we are still multiple days out, so stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. Lastly, I did want to touch on the temperatures across the United States. This is the temperature anomalies. Gives us an idea from above average to below normal temperatures. Overall, for the next several days, heat will build back in, especially across parts of the central and northern plains. Temperatures well above average as we head closer to a Thursday and a Friday. Record breaking high temperatures possible by the time we get to Thursday. By the time we go into Friday and a Saturday, we'll probably get at least a small cool down across parts of the Midwest behind that low pressure system. So this area in particular will be under the gun there for maybe a small cool down as we go into next week. Things, again, very uncertain by that point, but we might get a good cool down as we go into next week, and that would be around Thanksgiving time frame. So kind of keep that in mind. Again, if we get that big storm, this is definitely something that will be in play. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.